now have, which I don't kind of, I don't really understand that. I thought it was the team that lost the game get to pick first the next game. I don't know. Right, so who finishes? Uh, thanks, Marco. We just made an appearance just in time to fill me in on rules. Uh, apparently, it's who finishes the map, uh, who finishes the game quickest, then gets the, uh, the, the choice of side for game number three. So that's how that works. Glad someone knows. I guess someone knows. So the band's coming out, and un no shock, really, Shen being banned. Ergot also being banned out by Gamed. Um, Warwick being taken away, so it didn't work out. And Morgana being banned. So very much targeted bans from the last two matches that have happened. How are they going to go with... I, I'm interested to see how these picks are going to work this time around, because we've had some pretty close-run games. Um, the first one... I think could have gone either way. Second one was gamed very much in domination control, but that was mainly for the fact that Shen was allowed and the Morgana played very well as well. Are they going to go... They're going to ban out Aurelia. Um, have they banned Aurelia yet? That's, that's no, she's not even been no. mentioned. Not picked, not banned. But they did that last game as well with Cogmore. Oh, no, that was, that was peculiar, actually. But <laughs> it just seems a bit random. To be honest, I mean, the way that they're doing it, I guess they've, they, they know what they want in their top lane and therefore don't want Irelia against it. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's a strange choice, that one. Maybe they've just thought, oh, okay, Cassidy is a, a generic ban there straight away and it is going to be a Janna first pick. And so that's going to get locked in. So not giving anything away to Peculiar what they're going to go with here, game. I was assuming they lock it in. And there it is. And there was a question there. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about it now because uh, apparently we're only answering idiotic questions. Why isn't anyone playing Rumble? It's just um, that's an interesting one, and it's not really been a champion that's been that favoured, other than Fnatic in in season one. I can't mm. think of anyone that's played him massively in any of the tournaments I've really covered. Yeah, Europe just doesn't like Rumble. <laughs> yeah, it's a strange. But you don't see the American teams either playing it too much in the uh, in the big tournaments. It's yeah. a definite strange one. Ari and Cogmore being picked up. Okay, now we're getting serious, and maybe that's why Cogmore was banned before. So they are going to pick it up. Peculiar will be playing that one, and there's going to be a new new support with Cogmore. That's kind of been the generic thing lately. Um, Ari, of course, could be top or bottom uh, or mid. Um, I don't think it's going to be bottom. Although we have seen an Ari bottom, an AD Ari bottom by Absolute Legends before. Uh, it is it is doable. Slep has played it. So, Carthus was left open and has been picked. But we've talked about this many, many times, Joe, about an early Carthus pick. You've got a lot of counters for it there. And they've picked it up because they they were fearful of it going to the opposition. It can be a hyper carry if fed well. Nocturne, of course, has been something Glucose has picked up a few times already. But... Uh, they could easily counter this Carthus. The question is, what will they counter it with? Uh, Soraka seems to be the support favoured by the German teams, I guess. It's, it's one of those ones that's been picked up quite a lot lately. Obviously, Janna was insta-locked in. In fact, janna has been banned, hasn't it, tonight? T tonight? Today? This morning? This afternoon? Wherever we are. <laughs> yeah, what, what time are we on? Uh, half past five, which means we're not going to start the second game at 6 o'clock. See? I knew it. I knew that was going to happen. Uh, but it's still best of three, so uh, I don't think anyone cares that we have to uh, go a little bit later. Uh, Lee Sin going to be locked in there. Soraka going to be the uh, support of choice. I say that. You never know these days uh, whether Soraka is going to end up, but most likely down at bottom. And it looks like we are going to be having a Shivana top lane. The question is, who's it going to be against? Because... We could still see Ari mid, Lee Sin up at top, or Lee Sin in the jungle, Ari up at top. Still quite a few uh, options there for Peculiar. And it looks like it's going to be an Ash Janet bottom lane. We've not seen Corky today, which kind of surprises me. Obviously, uh, both teams not feeling the Corky love. He certainly uh, seems to be, um, you know, back popular pick right now, especially uh, teamed up with Jano. We saw it a lot at the Intel Extreme Masters World Championship. And there is Ash and Yorick. And they've decided to go for And we saw on Thursday, actually, Demon and Yorick, who, um, you know, for us, so, so, so annoying up in that top lane. Um, and Game are going to be hoping that they can replicate that. 
Yeah, we also saw Veggie on Nautilus as well, didn't he? He was a very yeah. good jungler, and it's looking like it's going to be another Nautilus in the jungle. Although, well, it could be... Hmm. Okay. Yeah, no, it will be Nautilus in the jungle, I think. It will be Lise in top lane and Ari in the mid. I think that's the way they're looking to angle it. Whereas, like you say, Yorick on the top lane. So Yorick versus Lee in top lane. Uh, that went very badly wrong for Yor uh, Lee Sin last time, if I recall. That was, like we said, it was... When was it? Uh, <laughs> I don't know when these games were. It was Thursday, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it was a long night. It was a long night. It looks like it might be another one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think uh, 9, 10 o'clock we're looking at definitely tonight. Well, if it's uh, two good best of threes, then don't particularly care. Uh, so we're going to have uh, Attack Man then in the middle with Ari. And uh, we are going to see Blunatic's top lane, Nautilus, in the jungle. Entenzberg is going to be uh, on paired on that bottom lane for games with Ash. And uh, Janet has his support. Karthus in the middle. Shimmy's actually gone for Flash Ignite. So uh, I guess going to be playing pretty aggressive with this Yorick in top lane. Yes, I I'm, I'm not sure how it's going to work out. I honestly, it's... Uh... And Lee Sin wasn't the greatest in the jungle last time. We've not seen a good Lee Sin in these last three games, actually, um, which is a little bit strange. But uh, we are going to get into the match, and uh, it's great to see a, a six-second delay. It's like, I feel like I'm on an event. I feel like I'm there, <laughs> but uh, I am there. not quite there. You I know, this, know. Is, this is one of the times that I actually could have been there, you know. <laughs> Just yeah. saying. Could have worked out, right? Oh, we're going to go on a white screen again. It's going to confuse me. Yeah, I keep I keep showing everyone and uh, child my uh, my desktop, so I'm not quick enough to uh, switch away from that one. Uh, but game number three, this one, the uh, winner of this one will go through into the semi-final, where they will play against. I have to bring up the playoffs. I think they play Logics, right? The winner of this first one. Uh, yes, they do. It's playoffs. Yes, Logics in the semi-final, which have been the team so far. To beat 9-0, they went in the group stage, sailed through without any problems. But let's give you a run now the teams. For game, we have Entenzberg on Ash, Grulam on Carthus, Glucosa on Nocturne, Sebastian on Janna, and Shimmy on Yorick. And for Peculiar Gaming, we have Carianus on Nautilus, Tabuno on Cogmore, Blunatix on Lee Sin, Karolol on Soraka, and Attackman on Ari. So here we go. We are into the game. What have they bought? Anything exciting? No, it's just boots all around again, as always. Lots and lots of boots, cloth, and pots. A lot of health pots. And, of course, the supports going with the usuals, Welcome which is the, the, uh, the fairy trade. charm, isn't it? Yeah. So, are we going to see an invade? We saw an invade badly backfire by Peculiar last time. Are they going to go for it again? The ward's going to get placed by Sebastian Bullock. So, ooh, I thought he was going to go into that. I thought I was going to be ballsy move. I thought he was going to go straight into that bush, straight towards the Buna on Jurassic Cogmore. But he didn't. Hence work is down the bottom. And you know what? I think they're going to go for this invade again. Uh, I think they'd be crazy too. No, they are going to back away. They're just going to say, no, we've only got... We've not, they've not got the strongest level 1 team, actually, if, if I'm honest. So uh, I think Peculiar are wise to just back off and they're just going to start Wolves and Blue. Yeah, and after uh, last game's uh, failings at level one, I don't think they want to have any kind of repeat for that one. You know, it, it does happen uh, when you come into these third and final games in a best of three set that both teams play very, very cautiously. Mistakes at this stage of a game are going to possibly cost you your spot in that semi-final. So uh, I'm guessing we're going to see a pretty standard start. Ash and Jan are going to go down bottom side to the Golems. Blue start position for Carianus, as Demon mentioned, and uh, blue, uh, sorry, wolf start, I should say, and then off to blue, and blue, no, wolves as well, start for uh, Glucosa down on the game side. And uh, it looks like Shimmy's gonna hang around there, do uh, a little bit of damage, help Glucosa out with this blue buff, get him sailing nicely on his way. We will see uh, Cogmore and Soraka helping out uh, Nautilus as well with that blue buff. We'll reset one of the uh, one of the small lizards just to annoy him that little bit. But we'll be finished off. So let's have a look at the lanes then. Up top we've got Yorick versus Lee Sin. Middle's going to be Ari versus Karthus. Bottom will be Ash and Janet versus Cogmore and Soraka. And the two junglers are going to be Nocturne and Nautilus. And Nautilus already coming over towards the uh, middle lane. Was spotted. There is a ward down here. Also one on the bottom side as well. 
So not really uh, much to write home about there. I'm interested to see how Yorick does in his top lane against Lee Sin, to be honest. And I think he could have some real problems early on. But once he starts to uh, get that mana a little bit stronger, he's going to become a very, very big annoyance up in top lane for Lee Sin. Yeah, now that I think back to the Yorick actually, didn't he get a double kill early on because they yeah. dived him badly, yeah, so maybe we were a little uh, obscured by our view on that one. Meanwhile, down the bottom, they are continuing to exchange blows. Tabuna has done a pretty good job at keeping up with Entzwerg throughout these last two matches. And he's doing just as well at the moment. 12 CS to a lowly, where are we, 15 CS between the two. Early days, of course. Ooh, he's going very aggressive, straight to his face. Eats a volley straight away. I'm not too sure what his plan was there. I was surely he realised he was going to get a volley straight to the face as soon as he did it. It was a, it's a pretty uh, strange exchange, but uh, he's going to continue on. He's going to try and do it again, actually, forcing him back. Meanwhile, at the top, you can see that it's just poking it back and forth. Obviously, Leeson is fairly strong early on. We'll try and get in there and have a go towards Shimmy. Shimmy's going to take a bit of damage, but uh, again... Just throws those ghouls out. I think I remember the name of it. It's, it's uh, Omen of Pestilence, is it? He's just put out. In fact, he put Pestilence and Famine out, looking at his cooldown time. Um, so he threw them both straight at towards Blunatix there to get the slowdown. Now Karanius is coming round. Will surely land the anchor on him. Oh, no! Dodge is very nice. He gets that flash just about the right perfect time. Sort of gauged it very well. And Karanius does have to back away. Double buff on him and all. But Nocturne is joining the party, Joe. Whether they're going to be able to get on towards Blunatix this time. Yeah, Nocturne right in the uh, in the back, which obviously allows Blunatix a little bit more freedom to escape should they move in there. And Nocturne is just going to uh, sit back a little bit there. And, and I'm kind of surprised that Yorick didn't maybe uh, have a bit of a poke for that one. Actually, they are going to come back in. And Glucosa is there. Ignite will go down. Can Blunatix escape from this one? He needs just a couple more hits. He will dash over to Carianus. And he's got literally no HP. I think he was on about 40 health there as he dodged over to Carianus, who also himself wasn't that healthy, and Gaines not quite able to get in there and pick up that first blood. Very good help from the jungler there, really just getting in. Knew exactly what he had to do, just get out of the way, because he would almost certainly have gone down there. One little swing, one last hit would have done it. Tabuna eating a Howling Gale down the bottom. And they continue the farming session. How's it going between the mid? Ari versus Karthus. Karthus is looking like he's going to go take the... Uh, Wraiths away because obviously the jungler's been away. Actually, says I mentioned that I think the jungler probably would have been around here in a second, but Grillum has taken them regardless. So Grillum's picking up those uh, wraiths with his lay waste. So Grillum up to 36 CS compared to 39 on Ari. Ari can see just clearing that wave. Obviously, that will just swing back in Grillum's favor in a second as he picks up the wave of his own. Lunatix returns the lane, having not died with a Doran's blade. And we just saw their Blunatic sticking down this uh, ward a little bit deeper than you uh, might normally expect it to be. But when you're against the Nocturne, it's always wise to have that. Obviously, you uh, can spot him then for that ulti range should it come in. Uh, Shimmy is a little bit ahead here in uh, levels. Blunatic's not quite level four, uh, level five just yet. Actually, we will see Charm landing there onto Grulam. Wasn't able to finish off, though, attack went. Mana was uh, fairly low, in fact, pretty much empty. Nautilus came across, but not able to really add anything to that fight. The CS in middle, Karthus at 43, compared to the 45 of Ari, who's just gone back and picked up that second Doran's ring. Karthus is still in lane, and uh, still got a fair chunk of his uh, of his mana left as well. Meanwhile, down at bottom there, we've just seen Tabuno again put a little bit of damage down. The slow will grow across Sebastian, but not able to get in a position to uh, really do any more. And obviously the, uh, the sustainability down in this bottom lane is going to work in favour of uh, Peculiar early on, getting that heal constantly from Soraka. Just the uh, quick look at here up at top because I did see Blunatix pushing there. He has to go back and uh, we are actually going to be seeing their Nocturne coming in. He's not up at ulti level just yet, but Blunatix has actually come back there. I'm not sure that was the best decision, but well, won't bottom, bottom. hamper him too much. And down at the bottom, we've got Ari there. Nothing comes of it. No, he put the charm across, just about missed off uh, Enzwerg there. Dodged it very nicely, because it would have almost certainly been a death straight away. The first blood's still not coming. And this is uh, definitely a lot slower game than we've seen. But not surprisingly, because you know, this is a case of 
getting knocked down into the lower bracket. There's a lower bracket, I believe, isn't there? Uh, frankly, this might even be getting knocked out of the tournament. Yeah, knocked out is a single elim. This is this is straight out of the tournament, and it's a, yeah, straight third and fourth place playoff, and it's a single elim. So, yeah, thank God, didn't want to double elim on a best of three. <laughs> 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 Not in one day, that's for sure. But uh, Innsberg continuing to farm out. Blue buff will be given across to Attackman, aka the Elder Golem, as he. Uh, just gets his glass balls across, or whatever you want to call them. It's the exact name is the uh, it's a fireball. Foxfire, Foxfire, Fireball. Um, Techman will just clear out that, pick up the CS as well. So Shimmy has returned to lane with that Tyr of the Goddess, which is why he's been a lot more pushy on towards Planetics now. Planetics had a slight advantage actually when he uh, when he went back and got the Doran's play, but uh, that's quickly changed hands now. He's got that Tyr of the Goddess on. Meanwhile, Catalyst are protected by Grulam. You can see both with the blue buff on. Double Doran's rings for Attack Man. Still not really a lot going between these two. Blunatic's just been harassed at the top again by Shimmy, but uh, sort of a, a, a tip for tat at the moment. Nocturne diving down the bottom there, actually, on towards Tabuna, but a good exhaust use straight away, and I think he's going to get away from that one. Tabuna even has the balls just to turn around and throw a couple of ulties at them. Very much secure and safe in the knowledge that they would got that one covered. Yeah, and up at top now, you can see that Shimmy is really starting to uh, show signs of annoyance for Blun and Ticks. He's having to uh, pull off those pots. And Ghoul's constantly harassing down Blun and Ticks. He's having to spend more time running away from the uh, the Ghouls than he can farming. There goes the other two in onto him. And Shimmy actually starts to uh, back away there. Meanwhile, in the middle, what have we got going on? Both up at level 8 now and uh, clearing these waves pretty quickly th with those layaways. Oh, the Nautilus coming down as well. Is he going to be in a position though? No minions there as of yet. And you can see that Carthus sat fairly back. Glucosa, as we saw earlier, is now up to uh, level 7. So I expect to see a little bit more action from the darkness. And there's a pink ward put down by Dragon. Sebastian going to get himself a nice cheeky 25 gold. And uh, gets himself full vision over by that dragon side. And I think they're going to go for dragon here. Lee Sin started to work his way down. Nautilus is there. And Yorick is still up in that top lane. Though we do have Nocturne here over that side. There's uh, the pink ward taken away. And are they going to start it off? Glucosa hanging at the back. And we will see carry on and start off there with the dragon. Will they go back now that they realize that uh, Nocturne is there? Not sure that they will. They've pulled Dragon out here. Oops, resetting it for the 196 health, but I think this is going to be a freebie with Yori cover that top lane. And they're going to use this opportunity to push. We've seen the race stolen away there by Grulam. Shimmy is up onto that top turret, but his uh, pushing power not all that brilliant still at this stage. And uh, he's also completely out of mind. He's going to let those minions do as much damage as possible. But. Either way, nice little dragon taken early on, and that will leave us a, a completely even game. Yeah, indeed. So, games weren't quite prepared for that one. But you've got to think later on in game, once uh, Entzwerg gets fed, that uh, Yorick's going to use that ulti and effectively have two very strong AD carries. Coralol just uh, getting pushed by that Howling Gale, and you can see that uh, Karenius came down here, but uh, immediately going to back off because. Realise he's spotted, his goose was cooked. And he's just going to have to back off. Pick up. What's he going to buy? He's just gone back to buy a half of gold bullets. Here. So uh, continue on his farming session. Grulam picks up all the uh, minions in the middle. Where's Ari wandering off to? Simply going to pick up that last wraith that was left. Nice, cheeky play by Grulam there, leaving the uh, last wraith, which immediately means he's going to hamper the gold intake. Of either the jungler or in this case the AP mid. Grunum continuing farming. Let's have a look. How is the farm going? 109 CS to 90. So no shock that uh, Karthus is ahead in the farming session. You could pick up by Karyanas there. Farming away. Where's Lee Sin just going there? He's just warded up the tri bush. Interesting for Shimmy there. So protecting himself from that Nocturne. Nocturne is likely to go towards that tri bush and then pop the ulti straight towards him. So good protection. Not going with the river ward. Instead, just went for that tri bush ward. Yeah, it leaves him a little bit open on that side, and there's actually been a ping there. I saw 
that uh, Nocturne was coming up. Nautilus started to work his way in there as well. So they want to try and cover off and make sure that Nocturne is not coming around. Actually, Glucosa will spot Karyanus. Not going to go in there and do any attacking because the attack line was coming. Blue Nantix had left the lane as well. There we go. Back into their farm position. Blue is now available. Should be going over towards Carthus, but they need to be careful uh, Careful because Karyanus and Attackman are both there. Will be picked up. Actually, it was taken by Nocturne. I'm not sure they wanted to do that. And there goes the slow bar. And Peculiar decide to back away rather than going in there with that three-man push. Indeed, so backs off. <clears throat> Less than ideal. I mean, Grulam would have wanted that, so they might try something for their own blue buff here towards Peculiar, and you can see Peculiar are making their way across, they know there's Yub, and that's why Attackman's suddenly been a bit more aggressive on uh, Grulam here. He realises he's got to try and force his lane, quickly clear it so he can get over and pick up that blue buff. That's exactly what he's going to do. But unfortunately, he's against Akathas, which is very hard to push quickly. Coralol's coming across to help out, and heals on towards Karyanas there. Just checking off that lane, and it will be Attackman picking up the blue buff. So. Good bit of force play there from uh, Peculiar to make sure he couldn't have the blue. Which obviously means the ulti, the cooldowns, the mana, etc. that goes with picking up that Elder Golem buff. So Grulam as it stands. Oh, bottom. Oh, diving in. It is a Nocturne diving. It may well be the first blood here to Buna. You can see the Carthus ulti coming out as well. Will they manage to lay down enough? The Carthus ulti has gone down. A heal from Coral Old White just to be enough to save him. No, I think it's going to be a dive in the turret. He will go down. Will he be able to get anything from it? You can see that he's... Oh, Karyanus got knocked out. I think his ulti tried to go in there, but he got knocked out of it by a nice Howling Gale. The Howling Gale will be the last thing that Janna does, though, because Ari manages to pick up the kill there. Entzwerg may well be taken down as well. Attackman could easily follow this one through, but it is going to back away. Didn't fancy taking too many turret hits. So, despite the fact First Blood going across to Ash, which would be Entzwerg, it also means they lost two kills straight away. So, not the greatest exchange they could have had. Yeah, they were, I think, open for uh, a swift escape from that one. Nautilus, mid. though, was right on the mark coming in. We are seeing them now pushing towards that mid. Karyanus realizing he might not get in there. Actually, will pull himself in, but I'm not sure they're going to be able to uh, finish off. That was some nice play, nice dodging from Grulam. Did dodge the charm with that charm. I think that could have been a very, very different story. Attack man playing aggressive. He's actually going to flash in there. Is he going to get the kill? He is exhausted right now. Ignite is burning as well on Grulam. Will survive that one. And Attack Man playing so, so aggressive now that he's got this blue buff on. And Carthus knows he's going to have to be a little bit careful here for the next couple of minutes. Glucosa is still there, but I'm not sure he's going to be able to do too much about the pressure that's been put now onto this mid turret. There's a decent amount of minions. They're all uh, only one hit to go down. Looks like Attack Man's going to back away and steal away as many raids as he can and then back off from it. Oh, Tabuno is also in trouble down at bottom. Ash Arrow is used. Sebastian on the other side did get a Howling Gale off. Surely Tabuno's dead. Yes, he is, but he's going to chase Entenzwerg, who gets blocked there by, <laughs> by the minions. And Entenzwerg, now one more basic attack before that. He could have actually gone down there to the, uh, to the Kog'Maw. But as such, he manages to survive, gets a kill, and we're back to 2-2. Two -two. Yeah, they're going for attack man as well in the middle there. Manchester land the layways and the uh, wall of pain, but... Uh, Jimmy coming in, and we can see the damage that Attackman laid out straight away there. Quick burst straight across them. And like you mentioned, if he does get a charm on someone, he's really going to be at the point where he can just finish them off straight away. Will of the Ancients almost complete as well. He's got uh, Karyanas coming in support. Nocturne is just around there, missing the uh, anchor though. And they will back away from this one, just in time for the Dragon Respawn as well. So have they forced the issue there? There is a pink ward you can see on from Peculiar. But I don't think they're in a situation where they can react to this one. You know, I think game, they're going to pick up a free dragon of their own. Yeah, dragon's going to be freebie again. Second top tower, though. We've seen it in this one. Yeah, and that's the reason there. Blunatix was on that top tower. They realized they couldn't quite get in there and uh, do the damage that they needed to do. Pink Ward actually timed out before they could take the uh, ward away that game put down. It looks like Games may even have a good crack at this middle turret. Carthus is coming in as well. Tabuno, the only one around. He's going to put as much damage out as he can, but that turret will go down. And Games, definite winners in that little uh, bit of an encounter there. Obviously taking out Dragon. They lost their top turret, but that middle turret, a lot more valuable.
Yeah, Vertex continues to dive on towards Shimmy there, forcing him away. Are they going to try and push his middle turret? I think they will. Grulam can't really defend this one solo. You can see Shimmy is around there. Glucosa in the background, but they've got enough here to get straight on the turret. And wow, that's a charm straight in towards Shimmy, and he went down very quickly indeed. Grulam's going to have to back away from this one. The Ash Arrow coming down towards Coralol, but it's really going to do nothing. And that was a quick pickup, and that's what we talked about earlier with Attackman. If he lands that charm on someone, they will go down very quickly. Now they need to be large. Rod's been put on him. Gloom's desperately trying to force them back here. And that's a good tower hit across Tabuna there. Tabuna taking down very low. Oh, that's going to be Gloom dead. Kicked in. Ulti kick from uh, Blunderticks there. Very nice positioning. Throws him straight in towards Ari, and Attackman says, thank you very much. And you know what? They're turning straight right. towards the Baron here. This is going to be a very low-level Baron, if that's what they're thinking. They may just go, it's a blue invade, yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, level 9 still uh, yeah. on, on the jungler. Not much they're going to do. Oh, Glucosa's walked straight in there. Are they going to finish him off? No, they're not. But they're not too worried about it because they've stolen away this blue buff. They're going as a five-man. Are they going to go for something else? No, Tabuno is just going to take himself that farm from up at top. And actually, Shimmy just uh, dumping the ghouls over the top of the wall will stop Lee Sin from getting himself home. But we're in a 4-2 lead for Peculiar in kills. They're ahead by just a couple of hundred in gold. Very, very wide open game. But 20 minutes in, they're still relatively passive, I can say, after uh, we saw what we've seen in the last two games. Yeah, we've not seen a big dragon fight yet. They've both been gifted pretty much for free. So Janet warding out there. Sebastian in dangerous territory. It does ward up the Baron, though. Just wary of any early Baron excursions that they might take. In fact, game to beat the one that could go for the early Baron, you'd think, if they got in a position with that Carthus. Luboff is going to get picked up. The Baron ward, well, sorry, the blue ward was on there, but... Uh, they couldn't get there in time and weren't really quick enough to react. I don't think they were in any position to react either. So Yorick's been left to uh, pick up a bit of farm at that top lane. And how are people starting to look in terms of builds? Willie the Ancient's completed to go with that Rod of the Ages and uh, Sorcerer's Boots as well, actually. Hextech, uh, Hextrin, sorry, is the one, one I'm after. On Lee Sin, he's uh, been very strong. So Lee Sin sort of is doing a pretty good job in this one. He's set up two of those kills and got the well needed assists for them. Ash, meanwhile, you can see he's uh, got that Bloodthirster nearly complete. Not too sure whether he's going for Bloodthirster. Or Infinity Edge, which he's just bought straight away. That's what I was thinking. Just picking, Everybody's been picking up the Vampire Acceptor for that extra lifesteal these days. Become commonplace on the AD carries. Meanwhile, you can see that uh, Cogmore actually going, I would assume, probably towards the Phantom Dancer first. Did pick up the BF Sword, though. Sort of half and half between the two builds at the moment. You can see he has got that Cloak of Agility there. So Infinity Edge will be coming out from Cogmore shortly. 0 2 3 for him. But Joey looking like uh, a double blue buff top. That blue buff will run out in a second, I think, on on they stole. Uh, double blue buffed up, and they're just going to back away and buy, I think, by the looks of it. So more purchasing coming out. None of them have actually got any on money, so why would they go back? Yeah, that's just, just sort of look at the gold, see how much they're all sat on. Nobody's got cash at all, so they're going to have to leave Tabuno farming up top. Yeah, and that's what they need quite uh, at this point as well, Tabuno needs to have a bit of time off in 0-2-3, which is uh, obviously not the best position for him to be in, but 177 to 165 CS, still slightly ahead. Like you said, he's uh, kind of mixed his build a little bit, not really uh, rushed into anything and gone across the board, getting that seal, plus the Crit Cloak, plus the uh, BF Sword as well. That will start to uh, finish off his build shortly once he's had that farm time. But a real tense one to be honest you can you can almost feel how tense these two teams are not wanting to uh go in make any silly mistakes shimmy is uh, gonna help push this middle lane both teams have lost that outer uh that outer turret in the middle the top down on the game side and the bottom down on the peculiar side there's ari as well just farming up this time down bottom and Dragon must be fairly close to spawning. You can see there's a ton of wards down from both teams. That pink ward, though, is possibly going to be the saving grace here. They will take that out. No oracles just yet on Janet. Sign is said to uh, invest in those pink wards for now. But there is still this one ward in this brush, which is going to reveal their position completely. As we did just see uh, Clairvoyance. No, there is no Clairvoyance. That's a total lie. Was that the... Hawk shot from Ash? I'm not sure. Either way. Or is there just a ward there? Am I blind? I don't know. Anyway. Uh, so, Dragon will be up pretty soonish. 
sadly we can't see how many seconds left on this uh, one ward in the brush. Actually, they may catch him up to attack Langrulum. Has gone away. Ulti there. Brilliant. From Nocturne. Now that was a that was a yeah. brilliant flash from Grulam there. He got yeah. the uh, ulti on him from uh, Karianus on on, on the Nautilus, which meant he would have been knocked up in the air by the anchor. But instead, he flashed across the bush. The Nocturne ulti was used, which completely took their vision away. So from, from their eyes, yeah. he just disappeared. Uh, that was brilliant play from uh, game there. Good protective play, but it also meant that uh, a flash and an ulti was burned and they're diving straight in now. It's Shimmy that's actually gone in. Not too sure that they're in the right position here. Sebastian using the ulti on Janna there. You can see that Grulam has come back and with use of, uh, of Yorick's ulti, so he's trying to burn them down. Does use Grulam to great success down the bottom there, but Ari is just ripping them apart alongside Cogmo. There's the, Car the Carpus ulti. Will just catch a cross on Will Edsworth. We have enough. No, he's been left and he's just going to get taken down. Can't quite stand and bang with three of them. And that will be peculiar coming out on top in a uh, four two exchange. So not too bad, but a dragon to go with it is a great big bonus. But uh, some good use from the Yorick play there. I think I was very impressed with Shimmy there because Carthus went down very quick. It wasn't too far off the uh, off the steel there either, Janet. And yeah, it's uh, another one of those annoying deaths where uh, Coral will actually chasing then finished up the with banana. Yes, um, always a good one to see. Currently one zero six, having a great game um, in Soraka so far. Two zero five on Ari. Finished off that worthy ancient Megatron cloak in there as well for that bit of magic resist and the needlessly large rod for the power. Is uh, all in there. Over on the other side, obviously, uh, Rod of Ages from earlier, plus the Abyssal set to finish on Carthus. He's currently sitting, what, 192 AP compared to the 250 from Ari, and she just uh, actually got herself back home, blasting one picked up as well. So we'll still have that advantage. Going to be doing lots of uh, damage in there. Ward's going down on Baron as well. What are PG thinking as their next move from this one? Tabuno actually uh, using the Elix as well, just to give him that bit more of an edge. And he's finished off his Infinity Edge now. So going with that uh, attack damage and crit before he went in for the Phantom Dancer, which will be coming up as his next purchase. And yeah, he, he was home fairly, uh, well, not so long ago. And again, we come down to that edgy scenario but are they what are they gonna do here are they gonna be starting off baron they're still very very low for my uh for my liking ash wasn't there either and it's just gonna be sebastian clearing out those wards trying to take away all that vision she's missed one here in this brush okay <laughs> spots it off he's gonna get rid of that one so that means vision advantage by baron is all in favor of game Surely we'll see that uh, reinstated from Peculi, who have been really good with their wards throughout this best of three. Oh, they have one of those standoff moments again. Both teams not really wanting to commit. Thinking about what their next move is. And it looks like we're going to see a bit of pushing here. They've seen two men go back, and that may just allow them to do a bit of damage onto this middle turret. They've got no minions with them just yet. Cogmore. Just trying to blast them down for, with that artillery from a distance. And they are going to start to move towards that tower. But how much damage can they really do onto it? These minions are going to be wiped out quickly. And Gamed force them away again. Indeed. So Gamed all return after buy-in. You can see the uh, zeal now picked up for Ash. So Ash is almost identical in builds to uh, Cogmore. Has uh, around about the same gold. Just about, just about 70 behind, which is pretty sizable but just a little bit behind so you can see the gold advantage between the two teams very even I think it's gonna be another dragon fight that's gonna turn things around for this one so how are the team compositions starting to measure up well Ari is very strong right now that is a given and there has really been a problem every time the team fight comes around the focus has not really been on either they've not been sort of going for either Ari or, or Cogmore it's been Nautilus has been getting in their faces too much and people have been hitting Nautilus too often but you know when the, the problem with the team fight is with the focus is you don't want to put yourself in a dangerous position so often you just have to simply hit the nearest thing to you and granted if it's Nautilus then yeah so be it but if you're going to put yourself in a, a, a crazy dangerous position to try and kill off a Cogmore or an Ari then uh, you're best off not doing it oh just caught a glimpse of the ward there Coralol does manage to take it out so 
vision cleared out of the Baron Pit. And uh, Peculiar back away and see if they can bait anything from Gamed here. I think they're the ones that are feeling the strongest at the moment in the team fight. So they're going to be ones that are going to force something peculiar here. So I would expect it to be, well, it's looking like it's measuring up to be a Baron fight. They're 20, just coming up to 28 minutes in. Sebastian might get caught out here if Karenia has got a good vision of him. But it didn't and does back away. And takes that ward down as well. You can see the Yorika ghoul coming around. And they are back to wait and regrouped. So at the moment, you know, in terms of positioning-wise, team-wise, oh, Entwerg's been split off here. Attackman going very deep there. Grillum's going to get caught out completely. We'll get taken down very quickly. You can see going balls deep. Blue Kozer diving straight in. We'll get popped. Entwerg's also going to go down very quickly. This has gone heavily in favour of Peculiar Gaming once again. And Sebastian, well, he's used that ultimate to uh, avail of simply saving himself because that was a very one-sided fight and a really great catch by Karianas there with the not uh, Nautilus ulti. He just got straight on towards Karthus. And it's going to be, I think, a free Baron for them. Yeah, only Ashing Janna remain. Uh, still not super high level. Karianas actually uh, taking most of the damage from it, but they do have that damage from attack lines using everything that he's got right now to try and finish off this Baron, and it is going to go down. And Peculiar having a nice advantage now. And that just shows you how uh, quick things can swing. You know, Ari, they were dancing off in middle. Ari decides, OK, I'm going in there, dashes straight through. And they just wiped the floor with them. They were actually fighting for a, a fair amount of time in the uh, in the Karthus. Uh, you know, Karthus is dead. They were actually fighting right on top of him for a little while. I think they realized that, that you know, it's probably not the best position to be in, but they managed to uh, finish uh, finish off another couple of kills without going down or without losing a single man after that. They didn't take away blue buff, which uh, surprised me. I'm not sure if they checked in. It just wasn't quite up then. But they have gone back home, finished by in. We're seeing Death Cap picked up by Ari. Negatron Cloak as well, plus the Elixir. So really shopping up heavily to make a big, big push while they've got this Baron buff on. With 30 minutes into the game, still, I have the feeling that Peculiar aren't going to be, uh, you know, moving in hell for leather from this point. I think they're still going to play very, very cautiously. I don't know. I think I think Peculiar are feeling strong now. They're definitely going to take this dragon for free without any problems. Grulam, you can see, is going to try and cause a problem, but uh, I don't think they're in any situation to really hassle them now because they've just ripped them apart in the last te three team fights. Not seen anything particularly coming from Gamed here to will say we are going to get in and going to cause a problem. And there is a free dragon. And now Grulum needs to be careful he doesn't get caught out again. Whew. Look at that. Throwing the ghoul straight in and uh, using that ghoul to dash on there. Very <laughs> nicely done from Blue and Fixer. In straight in. That's an interesting tactic they might, uh, might think of using later on. We've just seen that one before, but uh, they will take that it down in record speed and I think they're going to get the next one as well I don't think games can really stand with them at the moment groom has got to be so careful because we saw how quick attack man is to get in there and he will go diving in see he was looking at thinking can I get around the backside of these guys is there a, is there a chance for me to get in there I'm not too sure they are just going to invade take everything away they can they could just switch around straight towards the middle and tank it up you know which might be what they'll do they're not going to and it gave them game a chance to react. They're going to have to deal with that, that uh, big wave going up the back there. Will they switch straight across the top? Now they're going to deal with the back wave. And that's actually going to buy them time because you can see the Baron Ward. It's only got about a minute and a half left on it. So it's slowly ticking down, Joe. Yeah, slowly ticking down over that halfway point, at least by now. And I think they're going to try and push through this tower, which they're not really that in great a position to defend. Now we see the shield go down onto that turret, but... This one should be finished off fairly quickly with Blunatix who was uh, actually holding it there. Will go in, that turret is going to fall. Are they going to attack? Mm, Black attack man actually moved in. Charm missed. Did take a turret hit there as well, but Grulam, you can see, shredded down to below half HP from that little encounter. Now, one decent charm here can cause so many problems for gamed. Nice to uh, push them back. Obviously, they've got that great poke with the living artillery from uh, Cogmo, who can just nail them from the uh, from the distance that they have again. With them almost being caught. Next wave of minions does come in. That champ will be ready to go in there as well at some point soon. 
Kimmich just sending out the goals as often as possible. Trying to hold them off. How long have they got left on that Baron buff? It's literally about to tick out. And I think they want to use that with this minion wave to uh, take down this turret before that one does. And actually, Ash Arrow is going to come in. That was the charm across him. And this is going to be a big fight. Grulam is in the midst of everyone, but he is going to go down. Are they going to be able to finish off more bullets? It's actually going fairly low. Glucosa going low as well. Ari has gone down, and that's a big bonus for them. Someone to heal you. Sebastian has to flash away. Shimmy's oh. going to die. Blunatic somehow survived that one. And they are going to now push through, take out the inhibitor. That was a three for one. Sebastian was also very, very low, almost was taken out. But peculiar, are they going to simply march on towards these Nexus turrets? It looks like they need to be careful. They're not the healthiest, but also there's only a uh, Janna and Nocturne combo to stop this one. Still 16 seconds until Gruelum comes up. And I think they're going to push straight through and have a go at that Nexus turret. They're not super healthy, actually, and we may see Cole all go down. He will get healed up there. Are they going to try and take down Glucosa? No, they're just ignoring him. They're going to focus the Nexus, and it is going to be peculiar gaming that win this quarterfinal. A great, great best of three. A very tense third match, and they will move through to play Logics in the semi-final. Yeah, very strong performance in that third game, third and final game. They made up for what really went wrong in the second as well. They banned out, they made the right picks as well and performed very well as a team. And you've got to take your hats off as well to uh, Nautilus in the jungle, working out very well yeah. there, leasing at the top, staying in control throughout there. So very good play from uh, uh, for Peculiar. So they will go through, but the problem is now they're against Logix, <laughs> which is an issue. Yeah, Logix, uh, they've gone through the season completely undefeated. Nine wins out of nine games. That gave them the uh, slot straight into the semi-final, uh, which uh, will not be played today, in case you guys were uh, wondering. Today's just the two quarterfinals. The semis will come later in the month. Um, but yeah, a very commanding performance there from uh, Peculiar, showing that they can definitely give Logix a run for the money. They've already lost to them, no, let's not forget, in the main season, but... You know, when they're playing on LAN, so to speak, I guess it's not technically, but you know, you get the, uh, it's still that feeling, that's the best opportunity for them to uh, take out Logics when they get to that semi-final. Uh, let's give a, a quick rundown of the scores here for Peculiar, give them their uh, minute of fame. Blunatics on Lee Sint, 2-0-9, Tabuno on Kogmore, 6-3-5, Karianis on Nautilus, great performance for me in the jungle, 2-1-9, Coralol, on Soraka, 1-1-12. One, one, Doesn't get much better than that. And Attack Man on Ari, 3-1-10. And Attack Man, for me, making a big, big difference in there. We saw how you know, they were dancing off in that middle. He just dove straight in there. And they turned it around, picked up themselves a Baron, and then pushed through for the game win. So, we're going to be moving on here very shortly to the second quarter final. That will be coming up in uh, just a few moments. I'm not sure exactly what they're going to do. Obviously, both teams uh, that have just played there have to take all their equipment out. The new teams, uh, the next two teams have to come in there um, and get their stuff uh, all set up. Obviously, it will be ESC versus Homeless. Uh, so, it should be a great, great second quarter final. Both teams look relatively strong throughout the main season. Um, I think it was uh, fourth place, no, third place versus sixth place this. Um, as I click the wrong button, I wanted to go to main round. Come on. Yeah. Um, you can actually find uh, all the results from what have you from the main season if you go to esl-pro-series.net. Um, and yeah, ESC did finish in third position. One six, lost three. And Homeless scraped through in that uh, sixth spot, which was the, the hotly contested spot by the end of it with five wins and four losses. So ESC going to be the favourites going into that. But we're going to find out who's going to make it through into the other semi-final when we come back here in hopefully... Within, I guess, 10, 15 minutes, we'll be ready to start off that second semi-final. So don't go anywhere, guys. 